Hello and welcome back. We continue our report on Sri Lanka's JHU, a party of Buddhist monks who say that a full-out military offensive is the only way to end the conflict with the Tamil Tigers. But not all of Sri Lanka's Sinhalese majority shares the belief in a military solution. Peace activists and Buddhist monks who favor negotiations with the Tamil Tigers have come together to oppose the JHU. What has Sri Lanka gained from this war? Only our tears. Whether it's a Tamil mother or a Sinhala mother, it's only tears we have gained. We cried for 20 years and we are not going to let this happen ever again. If anybody wants to start this war again, they will have to do it over our dead bodies. To tell you very frankly, I place the responsibility on the JHU for what is happening right now in this country. Exactly, JHU is the one who really started this new cycle of violence. So they're a small party, how could they? Because of the fact that they went and also they got the support of the government. After her son disappeared, Visaka started a campaign for the recovery of dead and missing soldiers. She's reached across the front line to form an alliance with the Hindu mothers of missing Tamil fighters. Appalled by the renewed hostilities, she has joined the anti-war front in which she has found many pacifist monks. The core of Buddhism is non-violence. It doesn't approve the killing of even the lowliest creature. So what we see in Buddhist teaching is the way to avoid war. What role does Buddhism play in your work? Maybe it is the Buddhism that plays the main role of what we call, I mean, uh, hatred, bigot hatred, that nahi vera na vera ani. That's if you, I mean, if, if I am also really angry and if I thought that, okay, if my son is dead, let 100 LTT die. Am I going to end up? Then that 100 will be thinking that 1,000 single should die. <laughs> These are nationalist monks. They are disrupting an anti-war front rally in Colombo last year. National anti-war front. The people who are against the national anti-war front are a group that seems stronger than it is, thanks to the support of certain media and, in some cases, government backing. Some in the nationalist camp are convinced that the LTTE want not just independence, but to take over the whole of Sri Lanka. You can see that uh, they totally chased out Sinhalese uh, from northern province and some part of the eastern province. And they are trying to link uh, these areas to eastern province as well. And you know, over 600,000 Tamils are living in western province as well and they can link here too and uh, to, so that Sinhalese are trapped uh, between uh, these two areas. That's our fear. You see the fear is a part of the Sinhalese nationalist ideology. And now in the 20th century, Sinhala nationalist ideology emerged in primarily opposition to internal minorities. Uh, ethnic minorities, particularly Tamils. And the, the fact that Tamil ethnic nationalism took a kind of a form of an, a secessionist war has also reinforced this fear. So in a way, Sinhalese nationalism can be described as you know, nationalism of a majority with a kind of a minority complex. The Sinhalese make up three quarters of Sri Lanka's population. But the JHU never forgets the millions of Tamils living just across the sea in the Indian province of Tamil Nadu. They feel that even if the Sinhalese are the majority on Sri Lanka, they are a minority in the region. This is a map given to me by a JHU supporter. It shows the Tamil invasion of Heladiva. Heladiva is the name the JHU prefers for the island of Sri Lanka. They say Hela, as in Sinhala, should be the correct name for their country. One of their main fears is a Tamil invasion from India, where there are 70 million Tamils. Or do you think the Tamils who are behind this war are actually trying to destroy the Sinhala community on this island? 
They will destroy not only the Sinhala race, but the whole of our historic civilization, and they will set up a Tamil state which leads up to southern India. A thousand years ago, there was such a kingdom, but the Sinhalese destroyed it. Part of the Sinhalese nationalist ideology is to summon the past achievements. It's about this glorious golden past. Our Sinhalese kings, our Sinhalese farmers, Sinhalese so and so have made these great achievements. How important is it for a country to have national pride? Uh, I think uh, that is the number one, that is the number two, and that is the number three. Because uh, you, you lose your pride, you know, you're, you're nobody. Members of the up-and-coming urban middle class like Narendra form the JHU's key constituency. Although they lead comfortable lives under the current economic system, many still believe that the introduction of free market forces into Sri Lanka has had disastrous results. Thanks to globalization, today Western culture dictates everything. Western economic philosophy, Western political philosophy and Western socio-cultural philosophy. But we think that we should somehow protect our cultural values and traditions within this modern market. The Western culture and the Western development paradigm can't sustain in that manner. Our culture and the British principle is the only answer to the future world. The JHU's distrust of Western values is shared by unlikely allies such as the nationalist Marxist party, the JVP. This is their May Day march. They are protesting against the links they believe exist between the West and the Tamil Tigers. These marchers are shouting anti-NGO slogans. They're saying the international organizations that are here to help are in fact supporting the Tamil Tigers. For some nationalists in Sri Lanka, the support shown by any Western country for the now defunct peace process with the Tigers looks like a conspiracy. The economic might is here in Asia. So they feared that there would be a Buddhist ideology in Sri Lanka to form an Asian identity. So the Western powers feared that as Muslim fundamentalism raised, someday. Buddhist political ideologies will come in and threaten their cultural hegemony. So do you then suspect that the West would support the LTTE in order to keep Sinhala Buddhism in check, so to speak? Yes, definitely yes. Whenever the LTTE is going to be defeated, they come and save them. In fact, most Western countries now see the LTTE as a terrorist organization and have banned it. One of the few that hasn't is Norway, and when the Norwegians tried to broker the peace process, nationalist monks led a march on its embassy. The figure in a thong made from the Norwegian flag is Vilupalai Prabhakaran, the leader of the Tamil Tigers. My critique of this kind of a militant Sinhalese Buddhist nationalism is that it does not offer anything positive to the minorities. You see, minorities are constantly seen as sources of threat, sources of insecurity. It has been argued that it was the monks' pressure on the government to push for pro-Sinhala policies which caused the civil war in the first place. Some even claim that without the monks' involvement, there might never have been any Tamil tigers. This conflict has to stop in this generation. It should have been uh, dealt with severely at the very beginning. Certainly, I don't want my children to go through this when they are adults and when they have their own families. They know the importance of being a Sinhalese and a Buddhist. They have a lot of interest in uh, their race and religion. For me, if I want my pride, then definitely you want your pride as well. And if I'm not ready to treat you uh, with that respect and understand, that's where the conflict starts. In June, hundreds of Tamil men, women and children were rounded up by the police in Colombo and bussed out of the capital. They were told that they had no valid reasons to be there. Even if the military solution favoured by the JHU nationalists does defeat the Tigers for now, 
It is unlikely that there will be any lasting peace until Sri Lanka's many ethnic groups feel that the island is home to all of them. That's it for today's programme. If you have any thoughts on whether war can ever be the way to peace or on the role of Buddhism in Sri Lanka's politics, we'd love to hear from you on aljazeera.net forward slash English. Until next time, goodbye.